Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and we'll now begin with our activity. And we would like to request the director of the chaplain service, Police Brigadier General Jason Ortizo, to deliver the invocation. Let's bow our heads and be aware of God's loving presence in our midst. Let us pray. Almighty God, we acknowledge your presence in our lives, and so we praise and glorify you forever. We pray that you would encompass us with your eternal mercy and joy as we gather along with the PNP Press Corps and friends from the media. Fill us with the knowledge of your will, complete with spiritual wisdom and understanding as we hold our press conference. May we all experience the sacred manifestation of the Holy Spirit to bestow us the grace of responsible journalism and fair news coverage. Guide us all throughout as we race through the demands of our works and may you empower us with your sacred protection Continue, dear God, to sustain us with your divine providence that we may obtain multitude of accomplishments for the furtherance and betterment of our public service. Finally, we beg you, dear Lord, to deliver the entire PNP organization and its leadership from all forms of dangers and harms, especially to our beloved GPNP, Police General Debold M. Sinas, and let your perpetual blessings enjoin us to vault in as one team PNP for the betterment of the entire PNP organization and the legacy of our service. And we are also grateful, Lord, for the presence of our beloved Bishop, Most Reverend Oscar Jaime Florencio, who continuously guide us spiritually in our journey. All this we ask, in your most mighty name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor that our guest of honor and speaker in this morning flag raising ceremony in connection with the 27th PMP Ethics Day celebration is our guest to give his message. The Most Reverend Oscar Jaime Florencio, the Bishop of the Military Ordinary of the Philippines. Then after this message, we can accommodate questions in so far as the PMP is concerned. Ladies and gentlemen, the Most Reverend Oscar Jaime Florencio, Bishop of the Military Ordinary of the Philippines. Magandang umaga po. Sa ating lahat, I'd like to uh, thank our uh, Chief PNP, Police General Devold M. Sinas, and uh, Lieutenant General uh, um, uh, Ilyazar, and uh, uh, Lieutenant General uh, um, Hothern, Cesar Hothern Binag, and uh, General also um, uh, Major General uh, Veracruz. And uh, to all of you, I am very thankful for this uh, kind of opportunity to uh, come and uh, able to celebrate the, uh, with you the uh, 27th PNP Ethics Day. One of the things that I have uh, um, uh, gave this morning was uh, the uh, idea of uh, being uh, a gift to others. Because one, we celebrate this year, the fifth centenary, and uh, the theme is gifted to give. I think this is basic in uh, our life as a public servant, that uh, we who are given the mandate, given the authority, we should be able to give uh, what uh, we are supposed to give to the people, to the nation. And uh, secondly, we are to ponder also this uh, gifted to give because uh, it is uh, the most uh, basic or the fundamental thing 
that uh, we need to have. We can only give, we can only share, we can only do public service if uh, we're able to think of the other as a gift. And because the other is a gift, we uh, know that uh, the gift, that uh, the giftedness of the other person is uh, something that complements the uh, things that are lacking, limitations, and uh, imperfections that we have. The moment we are able to give of ourselves as gift to others, it is there that uh, we find fulfillment of our being, of who we are. Chances are, if we do not see others as the gift, if we do not see as others as something that can complement what is lacking in me, chances are we take the other as a competitor. We take the other as rival. And if that is our mental framework, then it would be difficult for us to be at the service of these people because we know that uh, temptations, things that would come to our mind, why will I be doing this to these people? They are um, uh, my uh, competitors, they are my rivals. That is why I emphasize this being a gift to others and others as a gift to us. And that way, we become uh, fulfilled people because we not just take and take and take. Because we all know that uh, kung hayaan natin na yun ang mentality natin to take and take and take, it will, you will spend all throughout your life taking and taking because human as we are, there is that craving that uh, cannot be sustained till the end. We need to stop. We need to and, uh, say to ourselves, when, this, uh, when will this end? And uh, we know that uh, guided by these uh, principles, we know that uh, the best example that uh, we can have is uh, no other than our uh, heroes, no other than uh, people who have uh, shared their lives for us. They gave up their lives so that uh, we too can emulate them. And uh, at the same time also, my presence would uh, be an assurance to the men and women of the PNP, the men and women of, uh, in uniform, that uh, I accompany them in this special journey as a shepherd and uh, as a spiritual com companion. Because that is also my mandate, being the bishop of uh, the uh, military ordinary, Bishop of the uh, Philippine National Police and other branches of service where we find also men and women in uniform. With this, I greet you all. Uh, Happy New Year. And with that also goes with the blessing that the new year of 2021 will be a blessing for us. Even though if uh, there are difficulties, even if there are uncertainties as regards the pandemic, but we know that uh, at the end, there will always be the light. There will always be the blessing coming from the Almighty. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Most Reverend uh, Lorenzo, sir. And uh, our friends from the media, sir, will ask uh, uh, <clears throat> with the pleasure of our Most Reverend, sir. First, I would like to call Mr. Lloyd Kaliwan of PNA. Good morning, Bishop. Good morning. Uh, question lang, uh, since sir, from the or, uh, ordinate bang PNP and military, what's the security, uh, uh, what's the preparations this coming uh, Black Nazarene feast? Um, uh, I was briefed by uh, the uh, representative, representatives from uh, the, uh, the uh, Kiapo um, uh, authorities and uh, particularly of those who are working with them that uh, the normal things that we've been doing will not be done. And uh, although there are plans that uh, um, to celebrate on the local dioceses, to celebrate in their churches the uh, feast of uh, the Black Nazarene, 
because uh, this is to prohibit uh, people also congregating in big uh, um, uh, gatherings. Um, uh, I think uh, this will uh, also be uh, um, to minimize also the contaminations, the exposures. And uh, we are to emphasize also that uh, the, it would be the same spirit that uh, what is celebrated in Capo and what is celebrated in the local dioceses. This is, like I said, this would be the same impact and the same uh, grace that we, they will be receiving. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Next is Maris Umali, ma'am, from GMA7. Bishop, good morning. Good morning. I'm Maris Umali, Paul, GMA7. Uh, Bishop, may I just know, in celebration of the 27th uh, PNP Ethics Day today, yes. uh, what other interventions or programs do you plan or the, the leadership plan to uh, impose or to, to do for the Philippine National Police to ensure that the highest degree of professionalism and ethics are being followed? Uh, we've seen in the uh, recent weeks of some policemen being involved in really heinous crimes. And uh, not only that, uh, even the general uh, uh, General Sinas already ordered uh, not to uh, involve themselves in indiscriminate firing, and yet some policemen were, or policewoman was still uh, involved. So obviously, a lot of programs have already been done by the Philippine National Police, and yet meron pa rin. Meron pa rin na talagang hindi sumusunod mga pasaway. Yes, thank you very much. Ma'am. Well, my, uh, my uh, connection to the PNP is uh, through the chaplain service and uh, through the priests. And uh, I uh, see to it that uh, the highest uh, um, standards, uh, ethical standards, be uh, observed and uh, be preached to uh, our men and women in the PNP family. And uh, obviously, we can only do so much. And uh, um, for, for us, it is uh, with the hope that as we preach to them, as we tell them, as we remind them, it is with the hope that uh, something will have to, to change, something that will have to have an impact on their lives. Because uh, for all we know, we, uh, uh, we, can, uh, we cannot just do this by ourselves. We need also to have some partnerships with uh, some other uh, agencies, other people, because by ourselves, uh, it's only up to that. And uh, really, even if, if I am not uh, um, uh, within, the, uh, within the campus of the chaplaincy, it is always my, uh, my advocacy to tell people and to remind people, because one way or the other, they will have to have an impact also on their lives. And uh, these people will have to encounter also that uh, decision whether to uh, really live up to what we are saying or to uh, just continue what they want to do. So it's only up to there. And, uh, but I, I am also of the, the trust and confidence of uh, the, uh, the leadership of the PNP through our um, uh, PNP chief that uh, everything is, is okay. And at the same time, also I have trust on my uh, chaplains that uh, they will have to uh, implement this uh, um, uh, order or implement this uh, um, uh, um, uh, improvement, enhancement of the ethical standards of uh, our men and women in the PNP. All right, are there any other questions from our media? So hearing none, so I guess that ends this particular uh, time with our bishop. So palapakan po natin ang ating so, bishop, thank you. Florencio. Thank you very much to our uh, um, chief PNP and to the command group. And I'm happy that I've been given this honor. And to all of you, um, uh, I just wish and hope that uh, the entire year of 2021 be a year of uh, blessings for you and at the same time also successes to our endeavors. May God bless you all. Maraming salamat po.
Once again, thank you very much, the Most Reverend Oscar Jaime Florencio, the Bishop of the Military Ordinariate of the Philippines. Thank you very much. Please be seated. We will now proceed, ladies and gentlemen, with our press conference with Police General Devol M. Sinas, GPMP, and let's hear the press statement of the GPMP, sir. Thank you very much, Johnny, to the member of the press. Happy New Year to all. Hopefully, we have a very fruitful and uh, progressive and uh, meaningful new year and of course bountiful no sana matapos na yung mga problema natin kagaya ng covid-19 at iba pa kasama ko po ngayon ay yung DCA po natin na si General Gilor Elizar ang DCO natin na si General Cesar Binag at saka yung DCDS natin na si General Jojo Veracruz kasama din yung staff dito. No? Sila po ang magbibigay ng mga updates ng mga iba ibang programa po ng PNP. And uh, we're very happy to be here and to, see, to meet you again. Mukhang nag, uh, nag uh, bakasyon ata rin kayo, ano? Nung Christmas at New Year. Kasi ngilan-ngilan lang nakita namin. And uh, sana tuloy na natin tong ugnayan po natin. So sa ngayon, uh, We'll be discussing matters that concerning uh, the, the PNP and uh, the same setup po tayo. So, to start with, I think uh, we'll do with the, the sequence of presentations. Ay unahin po namin muna kagad yung assessment natin sa crime situations to be followed. Huwag hindi mo namin discuss yung case ng Nina Junel to be followed agad yung assessment ng Directorate for Operations natin regarding sa New Year's ano, uh, uh, celebration, yung Christmas sa New Year's celebrations, at kung ano yung mga major incidents na nandoon. At, of course, yung assessment comparing to previous years para makita po nyo. So, we'll start with, uh, tawagin po natin yung director ng DIDM na si Police Major General Marni Marcos for the uh, crime Statistics. Go ahead, Anato. To our uh, Chief PNP, Police General uh, the Bold Sina, sir, to, our, uh, to the members of the command group, our TDCA, Lieutenant General Eliasar, our TDCO, Lieutenant General Binag, and to our uh, TCDS, Lieutenant General Vera Cruz. Other directors of the different directorates and uh, National Support Units, our friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat at Happy New Year. Today, I'm presenting to you the crime uh, statistics in comparison to the previous year. The total crime volume for 2020 is significant, significantly lower than that of the previous year. The increase of incidents from March to April is mainly due to the increase of non-index crimes, particularly the upsurge in the occurrence of quarantine-related violations. However, a downtrend on the crime volume can be gleaned 
for the succeeding months as people adapted to the new normal and observed quarantine-related protocols. For the year 2020, index crimes went down by 39.39%, while non-index crimes slightly increased by 1.43%. The rise in, in non-index crimes is primarily due to the occurrence of quarantine-related violations and the intensified campaign against illegal drugs. The number of Republic Act 9165 incidents constitutes 77% of special law violations for 2020, followed by the number of quarantine-related violations. The most common quarantine violations on border checkpoints and patrols were Article 148 of the Revised Penal Code, which is direct assault. Article 151 of the RPC, resistance and disobedience to person in authority. Also on the Republic Act 11332, the mandatory reporting of notifiable disease and health events of public health concern. And lastly, the Republic Act 11469, which is the Bayanihan to Heal as one act. Comparative eight focus crimes shown on the screen is the crime environment for January 1 to December 31, 2020, as compared to the same period of the previous year. Theft has the largest decrease among the eight focus crimes with almost 50% incident decrease for the year 2020. Monthly trend of the eight focus crimes in 2020 is significantly lower compared to that of 2019. Significant drop is seen specifically on robbery theft, carnapping during the first four months of 2020 or the height of the enhanced community quarantine caused by COVID-19 pandemic which has generally stopped or limited the movement of people. But as quarantine restriction loosened up in the following months, the eight focus crime incidents slowly goes up, but not as high as those recorded at the start of the year. In general, it can be construed that all the eight focus crimes went down for the period in review. Crime solution and crime clearance efficiencies for the year 2020 improved as compared to the previous year. This can be attributed to the following factors. Improved techniques in suspect identification and constant monitoring and follow-up of cases by the investigators despite the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition, the continuous enhancement of the next generation of investigation systems, or the NGIS, has influenced the improvement of crime clearance and solution efficiencies for 2020. As of today, weekly crime trend of 2020 is significantly lower than that of the previous year. Under the strong leadership of our current Chief PNP, the number of eight focus crimes continuously decreases. Assessment on crime environment shown on the screen. 
One is the general decrease on all eight focus crimes caused by the limitation of the movement of public during the enhanced quarantine. There's also an increase in non-index crime which sustained the campaign against illegal drugs and increase in violation of quarantine-related laws aside from special laws and violations of the revised penal code other than the index crimes. The increase in crime clearance and crime solution efficiencies, it improved the improved techniques in investigation and the strengthening of the NGIS. Another is the continuous monitoring and follow-up of cases by investigators. Further, one of the programs of the Chief PNP includes the improvement of the crime clearance and solution efficiencies. Under the guidance of the Chief PNP, the continuous monitoring and follow-up of cases as key strategies by the investigators indicate that it contributes to meaningful reduction of crime trends and keeps the PNP abreast in improving crime clearance and solution efficiencies respectively. That ends my presentation for the crime assessment for calendar year 2020. Thank you, uh, General Marnie Marcos. Could we have our director for operations, Police Major General Alfred Corpus? Go ahead, sir. Thank you, our Chief PNP, sir. With your permission, I'd like to proceed with uh, my uh, uh, Ligtas Paskuhan 2020 and uh, year, in, year End Security Threat Assessment uh, Report for the members of uh, the media this morning. Next slide, please. For our Ligtas Paskuhan 2020 Post Assessment, as of January 3, 2021, it is uh, significant to note that a decrease of nine incidents on illegal discharge of firearms was uh, observed. 528 incidents decreased on injuries caused by firecrackers. 26 in incidents decreased on illegal possession, use and sale of firecrackers, and two incidents decreased on fire burning caused by firecrackers. However, an increase of eight incidents of stray, stray bullets were recorded. Can you go back to the previous slide? And as compared, uh, can you please look at uh, the presentation and you can see that uh, in the previous years, we have uh, noted a decrease this year on illegal discharge of firearms. Uh, we have uh, noted uh, 20 incidents of stray bullet, uh, stray bullet incidents. Uh, can, can you, the link please? Yeah. Please open the link. Those are the incidents that were reported to us. Okay, so, so from NCRPO all the way to Region 12. Twenty incidents all in all. Next slide, please. Now go back to the slide. Go back to the presentation, please. Operator. Thank 
Okay, next slide. Out of the 23 incidents of illegal discharge of firearms, 19, 19 suspects were arrested, of whom three are unfortunately members of the Philippine National Police, two are members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, one is a government official, four are security guards, nine are civilians and 68 others were arrested for illegal possession, use, sale of firecrackers. Link, please. So these are the arrested persons, three of which are members of the Philippine National Police. Thank you. Next slide. On our assessment on Ligtas Pascuan 2020, the celebration was generally peaceful. Firecracker-related injuries recorded a decrease of 81%, which can be attributed to the active support of the local government units in banning of the use of firecrackers and fireworks display through issuance of resolutions and ordinances. Likewise, 29% decrease in illegal discharge of firearm incidents was noted. Unfortunately, on stray bullet incidents, we have seven more incidents this year as compared to last year. We have recorded one fatality and a DORO investigation is being conducted where the investigators have initially identified five persons of interest. As for this year-end security threat assessment, as the communist terrorist group reels from the relentless government operations, it remained unable to raise the level of its armed offensives. The recorded 202 New People's Army initiated violent incidents from the January 1 to December 31, 2020 is 12.5% lower than the 231 incidents recorded for the same period last year. With the 12% decrease from 128 to 113 in tactical offensives against government forces, Government fatalities were reduced by 45 percent from, from 40 to 22. Likewise, there is also considerable decline in their extortion-related atro atrocities by 34.3 percent from 35 to 23. Further, further statistics shows that there is a 20, 21 percent decrease in the number of CTG-initiated protest mass actions this year from 678 to 538. For the period covering January 1 to December 31, 2020, 155 communist terrorist groups died during police operations. 433 CTGs were arrested and 3,155 surrendered. I say again, 3,155 surrendered. And 897 assorted firearms were confiscated. On our assessment, the intensified campaign against the CTGs through the NTF LCAC resulted in the overall decline in CTGs initiated atrocities against the security forces and civilians. The CPP NPA was in crisis due to the subsequent political and tactical setback. There was also further erosion of the CPP NPA mass base with underground and party members because of the continuing withdrawal of their support. 
Reeling from the battlefield losses in the countryside, the CTG is expected to heavily rely on its remaining strength by trying to gain public support and sympathy through extensive propaganda exploitation against the government's campaigns. That ends my presentation. Thank you and good morning. Thank you very much, uh, Dio. Uh, let us hear the update of COVID-19 uh, by our DCA, General uh, Gilor Elisarsur. Thank you, sir. Happy New Year to everybody. Let me present to you our update for COVID-19 cases for the, the PNP. As of uh, 6 p.m. Uh, yesterday, can we have the next slide, please? As of uh, 6 p.m. yesterday, that is January 3, 2021, the PNP has recorded a total of 9,091 COVID-19 cases, which we have been actively monitoring since March 20 of last year. From this total number of cases, kindly note that 8,722 individuals have already recovered, including the recently recorded 33 uh, new recoveries. Currently, there are 341 active cases, including the new 25 cases reported yesterday. But we are hopeful that the total number of active cases will be added to the total number of recoveries. There have been no new deaths recovered, recorded. Hence, our total number of deaths remains at 27, the, the, last, the latest of which, the 27th death, was recorded on December, uh, December 2. Next slide. Uh, aside from the 9,091 9, confirmed cases of the PNP, we are also monitoring 402 individuals or police personnel, 56 of whom are close contact, 188 uh, suspect, and uh, 158 probable cases. Next slide. So we can see from here that uh, out of the 9,095, 8,722 or 96% have recovered already. Our active cases are 341 personnel, which is 3.7% of this uh, 9,091. The death is 0.3%. Uh, uh, Next slide, please. Now for the, uh, for the uh, out of the 9,091 uh, positive uh, cases, we can see from here the distribution. Uh, while it is true that most of these uh, 6,134 are actually uh, from coming from the PROs, but it is just 3.37% of, if we are going to, to uh, relate this with the whole number of personnel assigned with uh, PRO. And uh, uh, for NHQ, while only 337 are confirmed positive, but uh, out of the 3,364 strength that we have here in Camp Krame, lumalabas na 10% na yung nagpasti dito. And for NHQs, is uh, 7.51. So overall, 4.13% of the 220,000 uh, strong PNP personnel uh, have been recorded to have uh, infected or affected with the uh, COVID-19 case. Next slide. Similarly, for the active cases that we have right now, makikita natin dito na 3.75 itong 341 out of the total confirmed cases. For PROs, while most of these uh, cases uh, uh, come from uh, PROs, but it is just 2.33 itong active cases na ito sa total confirmed case. Pinakamataas pa rin yung sa NHQ na 8%, NHQ which is 6.52, which uh, is logical considering that uh, uh, most, well, the NHQ personnel assigned in Camp Krame and most of the NSUs also are here in Metro Manila, which is still the epicenter of this pandemic. Next slide, please. Inversely, for the recovered cases, makita natin dito na mas marami nakaka-recover sa, sa PROs. 97% uh, of uh, those uh, reported uh, uh, 
uh, confirmed cases, nakarecover na sa PRO, NHQ 92%, 93% for NSU. Next slide. So this is uh, the data for uh, the deaths out of the 27 deaths. Ito yung ating distribution and the percentage on uh, different uh, category. Next slide, please. For the new cases, the 25 new cases that we have, uh, this is the distribution. For yesterday, there is no reported uh, positive case for NSQ, five cases for NSU, and 20 cases for police municipal offices. For the new recoveries, out, next slide. For the 33 new recoveries, six uh, came from NHQ, 10 for NSUs, and 17 for PROs. Next slide. Out of these active uh, cases, 13 are confined in hospital, while 328 are in the different quarantine facilities of the Philippine National Police. For the PCR test, which is the main trust of our PNP uh, leadership, almost 36% uh, of the 220 strong PNP personnel have been tested, totaling to 78,793. Uh, please take note that uh, meron diyang iba na ang, ang, uh, ang test nila is not just once. And uh, we are counting also on the test conducted not only by the molecular laboratories of the PNP but other agencies like uh, uh, Red Cross. And uh, while it is true that 65% uh, uh, or 51,000 out of the 78,000 comes from PRO, pero 27% lang siya nitong uh, uh, do sa PRO. Pinakamaraming po na test natin, itong sa NSU natin, at saka sa NHQ. Uh, dahil nga, ang ating uh, intention or focus is to maximize the kind of testing of those personnel assigned in Metro Manila. From the NHQ, pati na rin dun sa mga NSUs na based in Metro Manila, as well as the NCRPO. Next slide. So ito po yung breakdown natin uh, para sa, sa NSQ. The average is uh, 68% at makikita natin na ito yung focus natin ngayon na gusto natin na lahat ng mga 3,364 na strength ng ating ng mga pulis na assigned sa NHQ, eh, lahat matay sila. Even though merong iba kasi na talagang work from home dahil uh, uh, vulnerable, so kung hindi man natin sila matay, at least ensure naman na wala silang problema. But kung kinakailangan, as needed, they will be tested. Even if our mobile uh, swabber will be going to their place to conduct testing. Next slide. And for the NSUs, napakataas, 73% ngayon. At uh, ito ang intention natin na uh, sa mga susunod na araw pa, ma-reach natin yung almost 100% of them. And for the PROs, while... Uh, uh, next slide. For the PROs, the overall average is 28%, pero makita natin na the, the NCRPO, pinakamalaking uh, strength natin, 23,000, 74% na yun na test sa kanila. Uh, at uh, yun naman yung focus natin dahil uh, they are based here in Metro Manila. Overall, 35.8% of our personnel have been tested with remaining 64%. But most of them, ito yung assigned sa mga PROs natin na wala namang mataas na infection sa kanila. Kaya ang pagtetest natin sa kanila is depende on availability, knowing that molecular laboratories are not available in their areas at the same time, wala naman tayo na monitor na infection in their areas. So we'll continue to focus this on na uh, areas na kung saan merong mataas na infection. So uh, since uh, we started last March until the end of uh, the year, uh, uh, the, the, the pas for positivity rate, we have 9,014 out of the 78,000, which is 11.49%. And uh, on the daily basis, January 1, 2, 3, as shown. Uh, makita rin po natin na uh, even almost uh, part ng holiday, but for the, for the testing that we are conducting, we are reaching our target, which is uh, uh, almost uh, 300 uh, PNP personnel being subjected to, uh, to swab testing. Next slide. So ito po yung... Uh, uh, bar graph naman natin nung pinakita natin. Uh, Sir Chief, with your permission, I would like to call on the director of our 
Health Service to, uh, uh, to present to you the donation of additional ambulance in the uh, health service uh, uh, offices and units. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, sir. As I think Chief PNP, General Sina, sir, uh, good morning. And to each and everyone, especially to our media. Uh, ito yung magandang balita. Uh, in the fight against COVID-19, yung pong ating Upsly ay nag-donate ng tatlong brand new ambulances. Okay, please, uh, ipapakita ko po natin. Ayan po yung tatlo ngayon. Nakaparada po yan sa health service ngayon. And today, ngayon pong araw na to, ay ngayon pa lang namin makukuha yung uh, mga papeles niyan, yung OR at CR. The make and type of the vehicle, huwag mo muna ng LS, iho. Uh, yun day po yan. Yan, as shown, ang kulay ay as usual, puti na may tatak na ambulance. Next slide. Yan po mga other pictures niyan. Of course, as shown, ventilation and airway equipment, monitoring, and or defibrillation, immobilization devices. Next. May mga, may mga dressings and bandages. Nakikita niyo po sa loob. As shown, may available medicines, fluids, and other uh, medical supplies. Yung ating uh, ambulance. Napakaganda po. At saka bagong-bago. Next. Okay. Uh, as shown, yung ambulance body. It is a tempered glass uh, division separating the driver. At saka po yung uh, pasyente. Of course, with uh, an, an air conditioning system with control, fire extinguisher, plus lights with extra batteries and bulbs. Next. Ayan, as shown, yung pong harapan, makikita nyo, at muli, yung pong loob ng ating mga ambulance. May intercom po po yan. Intra-vehicle intercom system between the driver and kung sino man yung kanyang kabadi na nasa loob na binabantay yung ating pasyente. Next. Ayan po ang mga litrato. Next. Ayan, ang rear view of the ambulance. Next slide. The inside. Next. Ayan, yung stretcher, medical kit, the first aid kit. Next. The interior view. Para mas lalo nating makita, palagi ko kapag yan ang inresponde sa ating mga huwag, na mag, huwag naman sana, ay talaga may chance ang mabuhay ang sino man ang uh, masiservisyohan niyan. Next, with medicines, stethoscope, BP apparatus, and other uh, medical equipment. Next, so maraming maraming pong salamat. Palakpakan po natin ang upslide. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, uh, General uh, Elisar and uh, Noli Batan. Now, let's proceed to the update of our cases. Pakikuan nga yung ano, kay Nuesca case. First, I'd like to inform the press that uh, sa Nuesca case po, ay uh, nakomit na po siya sa BGMP sa pa. Uh, Panigi Tarlac. No? Yung case po niya ay hinihir na po ng IAS and the IAS who handled the case niya um, promised to finish the case at the end of this week. So we'll have the resolution and by Monday. By next week, ang mag-review na po because this is within the jurisdiction po ng RD in CRPO ay si RD in CRPO na po ang magbigay ng final decision if he will uh, abide with the recommendation of IAS. Ganon po ang sistema na gagawin namin para mapabilis po, ma-achieve uh, ma po namin yung less than 30 days na pre-charge at summary hearing uh, ni Police Staff Sergeant Noel Nuesca po. So, yun po yung status. As to the nine personnel po ng involved sa Hulu incident, ay pinafinalize na rin namin yung dismissal nila and we have coordinated with the uh, prosecutors handling the case at nakausap ko na po ang uh, prosecutor general 
ay minamadali rin po nila ang pag-file ng kaso kasi pinafinalize namin yung dismissal ng siyam na PNP personnel na sana after after ma-finalize in 10 days ay meron na pong warrant of arrest. No? Kasi pag uh, wala pong warrant of arrest, I told them is that na, na i-maximize namin ang pag-hold sa kanila. After that, we'll turn over them to the relatives kung wala pa pong warrant of arrest. Kasi baka i-invoke na rin nila yung ma-arbitrary naman po yung police namin na may hawak sa kanila. At yung restrictive custody namin will be immediately turn, uh, terminated once ma-finalize ang, ang dismissal order nila sa PNP. So yun po yung latest natin sa dalawang major cases po niyan. As to the personnel na ni-report ka kanina ni General uh, Alfred Corpus na involved sa indiscriminate firing, lalo na yung sa Malabon, ay na-file na po sila ng kaso. No? Yung sa Malabon po na si Karen... Si Karen Borromeo ay uh, na-file na po ang kaso na disarmahan, uh, na drug test, which is happened positive, at saka alcohol is positive. However, yung paraffin test niya ay uh, positive, at saka yung bullet, uh, na na uh, ang slugs, at saka yung empty shells na recovered doon ay undergoing po ang ballistic examination with the crime lab. However, we have a very strong case against here, and the instruction of the the SILG sa amin is to implement the same procedure of having him dismissed immediately within 30 days. So I have already given instructions with again RD and CRPO since personnel niya to, to immediately conduct the necessary admin case and resolve the case in 30 days for her dismissal. Yun po ang nangyari. And also, I'd like to to show also yung, yung tanong dati ni kasamang uh, Alfred Dalison yung nagpositive sa drugs po ng PNP. Uh, which proceed sa report ng Crime Lab. Nandito bang Director Crime Lab? Okay. So, the deputy ng Crime Lab will report on the update of drug, uh, random drug test conducted since 2016 up to 2020 para makita nyo po yung uh, mga police na nag-drug test kami na wala pong humpay na pag implement Go ahead, Grace. Si Grace po ay ang Deputy, uh, Deputy Crime Lab Director. Go ahead, Grace. Colonel Grace, you stop you. Thank you, sir. Well, to our Chief uh, PNP, Police General DeBold Sinasir, to the members of uh, the PNP command group, sirs, members of the di directorial staff, the heads of uh, the different PNP units, members of the media who are present this morning, sirs, ma'ams, good morning. As introduced, I am Police Colonel Grace Eustachio, the Deputy Director for Operations of the PNP Crime Laboratory, representing uh, Police Brigadier General Steve Ludan, the Director of Crime Lab. I will be reporting on uh, the PNP personnel who tested positive for illegal drug use and the status of the filed administrative cases. With your permission, sir, I'll begin with my presentation with a brief introduction. In keeping with one of the primary trusts of P President Rodrigo Duterte in 2016, the PNP launched the Double Barrel Project which is the PNP Master Plan Against Illegal Drugs. One of the programs of the said program, of the said project rather, is the PNP Internal Cleansing, wherein the crime laboratory was tasked to conduct random and unannounced drug testing to PNP personnel. Next slide, please. Shown is the number of drug tests conducted since July of 2016 up to December 26, 2020, and underneath the figures, the number of those who yielded positive for drug use. Targeting maximum coverage at the end of 2016, the PNP conducted testing 
264,981 personnel and found 206 positive for illegal drug use, mostly for methamphetamine or shabu. The number of personnel subjected to drug tests on the succeeding years comprised approximately 25% of the uh, strength of the organization. In 2017, Crime Lab tested 16,297 with 82 positive, followed by 92,598 in 2018 with 68 positive, and then 80,278 personnel with 36 positive in 2019. As of December 26, 2020, there were 173,113 subjected to drug tests. As the PNP rallied for 100% coverage on the last quarter of the year under the leadership of our chief PNP, and then yielding 46 positives, seven of which were in November and December. We intend to sustain this activity targeting 100% of PNP population by 2021. The succeeding slides will show the number of PNP personnel who yielded positive to drug tests per office. Next, please. Starting with the command group, there was one male PNCO assigned at the office of the Deputy Chief for Operations who tested positive in 2019. Next slide, please. Next are the uh, different directorates where in two male non-uniform personnel or NUP tested positive, one assigned at the Directorate for Operations in 2016 and the other one from the Directorate for Personnel and Records Management in 2019. Next. Next, please. For the National Administrative Support Units, or NASUS, there were three male PNCOs from Headquarters Support Service, or HSS, who tested positive in 2016, and one male PCO from the Health Service in 2020. Next, please. Among the National Support Units, 25 males and one female, totaling 26, were found positive. They were assigned at Crime Lab, CIDG, IG, SAF, PSPG, and PCRG. Crime Lab has the most number with six, followed by SAF with five, and PSPG with four. Next slide, please. Police officers with highest number of tested positive were assigned at the police regional units with a total of 405 from 2016 to 2020. NCRPO topped the list with 72 personnel, followed by PRO 4A with 55 and PRO 9 with 39. And finally, the recapitulation. Next, please. For the recapitulation, a total of uh, 438 PNP personnel were tested positive for illegal drug use. Methamphetamine is the preferred illegal drug with 91%. Majority of those positive came from the police regional offices. Police non-commissioned officers or PNCOs comprise most of the users which regist registered at 430 or 98% and majority of the users are male. Shown is the data from the uh, Disciplinary Law and Order Division or DLOD under the DPRM regarding the status of admin cases filed against those who tested positive. Once the collected urine sample is confirmed positive, a copy of the laboratory report is submitted to the DIDM and the Internal Affairs Service. The EES takes cognizance and files administrative charges against these erring PNP personnel. 
as shown for the resolved um, for the resolved admin cases, out of the 438 PNP personnel found positive for drug use, 380 were already dismissed from the service. There were four cases which were dismissed due to lack of jurisdiction. However, this will still be pursued, refiled, and subject will be penalized. Two were terminated from the service. Under the pending administrative cases, there are 39 of them, 12 of which are for review of the disciplinary authority, referring to the chief PNP or the uh, regional director. Three are under summary hearing proceedings by RIAS and CR. One for pre-charge investigation by RIMD, RDMD and CRPO and 23 are under investigation by the NIAS or RIAS. No administrative case was filed on 13 personnel on account of death of nine. Two were dropped from the rolls or went on a wall and one optionally retired from the service or exited due to attrition. One resigned from the service. This is the data of status of admin cases against pain personnel who were found positive for drug use. This ends my presentation, sir. Thank you and good morning to everybody. Thank you, Grace. Now, uh, I think online and are the Pro 6. Is he online? Okay. So let us hear the presentation of RD Pro 6 on the implementation of search warrants in Capis and Iloilo. Go ahead, uh, General Rory Miranda. If you're online. Sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Online. I will be presenting the simultaneous implementation of search warrant in Cap and Iloilo, sir. Last December 30, 2020, sir. Uh, as a background, there, sir, we were there were reports and complaints from some personalities in the subject barangays illegally possessing firearms and explosives. With that, the CID developed the information and applied for search warrant in Quezon City. In cooperation with Police Regional OP6, the search warrants were implemented, sir. And on December 30, 2020, combined elements of CIDG and Pro 6, assisted by the Philippine Army, implemented the said search warrant in nine barangays, seven in Tapas, Capiz, and two in Calino, Iloilo, sir. On December 29, sir, Armed with a search warrant, our operating teams jumped off from Camp Hernandez in Bingle and proceeded to Barangay Masaroy and Garangan in Calino, Iloilo, and Barangays Acuna, Aguilinab, Takayan, Cruz Belt, Lahu, Nayawan, and the Ansur in municipality of Tapas, Capiz. The nearest barangay could be reached by two hours by foot from the drop-off point and others were nine hours by foot from the drop of area, sir. Our operating team started as early as 2, 50 a.m. until 8 a.m. in the serving of the search warrant, sir. And to give you an idea of what happened during the actual operations, sir, here are some of the photos. In the photos, you can see the actual search was made in the presence of Barangay Captain, it just saddened us that the barangay captain issued a statement the, to the media in a different way. Next. In the first photo, you can see the subjects being informed about the search warrant of the operating team. The other photo shows that the subject herself is keenly observing the search teams during the actual search, while the last photo shows that the end 
that it was uh, the recovered items were inside the residence. Photo one shows that there's a witness keeping an eye and even taking pictures of the operatives while conducting the search. And second photo shows our operative is conducting inventory of the items recovered in the sub in the subject's presence. The picture shows the evidence of search warrant against Artilito, Katipunan, where patrolman Archie Puga was shot by the subject but was saved by his bulletproof vest. Bago, before the jump of Masay, we required them just to wear helmet, to wear vest. Some of them did, and very fortunate that this guy uh, has his vest on them. These were taken from the house of subject Roy Giganto. All is shown is the empty shell of 9 millimeter, which alleged to be coming from the gun of the suspect. All implementing teams have taken photos during the actual operations to support the investigation and for documentation. There were a total of 16 arrested persons. Uh, unfortunately, nine of them, uh, nine of the 28 subjects died in the police operations, and there were three at large. Shown on the screen are the arrested personalities. There were 16 of them. Next. Next. Uh, you can see Ito yung isa sir na ginagamit nila si Baribig Aguirre, former Tumandok chairperson also remains missing. Sabi ng kaliwa, mawala pa raw pero hindi po totoo yan, yan ang ginagamit nila ngayon. Ito po ay arestado at ngayon kasalukuyan po nakakulong sa Tapas Police Station sir. Next. Ayan pa po yung mga ibang arestado. Uh, labing anim po sila lahat. Next. At ito pong labing anim na ito ay have profiles here with me kung ano po ang kanilang uh, uh, relationship at kanilang participation sa CPP and PA formerly and at, at present. So now I will be presenting those who next. And these are the persons who died in police operations. Uh, una siyang po sila. Number one is uh, si Roy Giganto. Second po ay si Reynaldo Katipunan, si Mario Aguirre, si Maurito Diaz Sr., LSU Gayas Jr., Artilito Katamin, Katipunan, si Jomar Bidal, Garson Katamin, Rolando Diaz. Yun po at, at ito po yung tatlong at large pero pinailan din po namin sila ng kaso. Ito po ay si Fortunato Ligario, si Alan Diaz Castillo, at si Abilar Diaz po. So, all in all po, sa recap ng recovered items natin, there were 47 firearms confiscated, 300 uh, different ammunition confiscated, and total number of uh, explosive confiscated is 38. Sa status po ng filing of the cases, uh, cases of for violation of uh, RA 9516 and RA 10591 were filed last December 31, 2020 against the following. Six arrested suspects in Kalino, one so subject who was at large, and 10 arrested suspects in Tapas, and two subjects who were at large also. So, summary of five cases, sir. Uh, violation of RA 9516 is 18. For violation of 10591 is 17. And for regular filing, ito po yung at large. Violation ng RA 9512 at violation ng 10591. Dalawang violation po yung at large po. Dalawa po. At meron po for filing sa violation ng uh, RA 10591 ay isa po. So, uh, that ends my presentation, sir. Thank you very much, uh, General Miranda. And I think uh, that's uh, the last of our presentations on the topics that are uh, uh, being presented to you. And I think all the officers involved here are ready to answer any follow-up questions from the 
uh, friends from our friends from the media. Uh, go ahead, Thank you, sir. Uh, Brandy. Thank you, sir. We shall now proceed with a Q&A coming from our friends from the media. First is Ma'am Leia Lagan of the UNTV. Ma'am. Morning, sirs. Sir, dun po sa Sham na police, uh, meron na pong natapos at naisampa na yung o oh, na nabigay na sa kanila yung kanilang dismissal order. At kung meron na, sir, nakapag-file na ba sila ng uh, motion for reconsideration, sir? Uh, last, ano, uh, before nag-end yung taon, last Friday, ay sinerb na po yung resolution nila. So, meron na pong uh, hinihintay na lang po yung proof of service and we are waiting for the MR. So, starting noon kasi office uh, day naman ang bilangan doon, so hinihintay pa. As of now, as of this day, wala pang feedback ang uh, uh, DILOS namin yung, uh, sa DPRM kung meron na nagtanggap. So, ang gagawin namin ay hintay lang namin up to the 10th day. Then, uh, once na meron man o wala na matanggap, then implementable na po yung dismissal po nila. Sir, pending yung motion for reconsideration nila, sumusweldo pa rin po sila bilang pulis. Uh, again, ma'am? Sir, sumusweldo pa rin po sila pending yung motion for reconsideration nila, sir? Uh, yes, sumusweldo pa sila. Kaya nga, hinintay namin yung 10 days na yon para pagkatapos implement yung dismissal nila. At dito pa rin po sila sa kampo, karami naka-restrictive cost to sir, hanggat hindi natatapos yung motion for reconsideration. Tama po kayo doon, ma'am. Tama po. Nandito pa po sila, nandito pa po sila naka-restricted. Uh, Sir, pag final and, ex and uh, executory na yung uh, dismissal, ibig sabihin kapag na-decision na, na na rin yung, dismi uh, yung motion for reconsideration nila at uh, final na yung uh, dismissal, ano po ang mga benepisyo na mamawala doon sa Siam na Pulis? Uh, pag uh, final and executory na yung dismissal nila, ay lahat po na benefits nila ay kuha na po. Una, salary and all the benefits. Ang mga, mga kukuha lang nila ay yung tinatawag natin na unused leaves. No? Yung uh, unused leave po ay yung pwede po nilang i-claim po yon. So, kung meron pa po silang natira. So other than that, all uh, benefits from the government will be forfeited. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Ma Next is Ms. Mary Sumali, ma'am, from GMA7. Sir, good morning. Sir, uh, tanong ko lang po kung na-inform na po kayo tungkol dun sa dalawang incidents po ng kidnapping, one in Quezon City and then the other one in Cavite. Yung sa Quezon City po kasi 21-year-old boy believed to have been uh, biking just along their street, along Hemadi and uh, Sabalete. And then it was captured on CCTV. All of a sudden, bigla na siya nawala. And then what were just found were his bicycle and his slippers. And then we are still gathering some information from Cavite. If you already have, sir, pwede pong malaman kung uh, ano po yung update dito sa dalawang cases na to ng kidnapping. And meron po ba tayo nakikitang trend ng uh, kidnapping sa ngayon? Okay. Yung isa, yung nakidnap na according bata, no? But I will not name the person first kasi we need help muna kasi ongoing pa yung operations doon, no? So, kung pwede sana, Ma'am Maris, we will just withhold muna any informations because the, the follow-up operations, the negotiations are ongoing para po hindi malagay sa alanganin yung buhay po. Kung okay lang sa inyo. Yung pangalawang kidnapping na sinabi mo ay ito po yun sa Chinese, Taiwanese National. Are you referring this one? So, if you're referring yung sa Taiwanese National, ay na-recover na po siya. No? Nahuli na po yung suspect noon. And I think you have presented it already sa press, con, press release namin, yung dalawa. Yung sa Taiwanese National, it has to do with uh, the POGO operations. Yung usual na problem na yung, yung isang uh, personnel nila, inalis may nagkautangan, tapos naghingi doon ng ano to, so na-track po natin, ay nahuli po. Sa ngayon, ayaw Chinese national din yung involved, so ayaw magsalita, so pinailan po natin ang kaso. So yun po yun. Yung isa ng latest na sinabi ng bike, ay withhold mo na. 
So far, wala kami nakitang trending na mag-increase ng kidnapping. What we are very, ano, monito po namin ay itong yung modu, MO or modus operandi dito sa Pogo na ilang beses na namin kinakausap, if they have problems regarding their employee, they should go to the police. So ilang, ilang na po to, no? Maybe in our next presentation, in our next press con, I will ask the anti-kidnapping group director to present kung ilan na po yung cases na puro pogo operated ang kidnapping po or abduction. So yun lang po muna sa ngayon, ma'am. Sir, on another issue, um, allegedly may mga students po selling sensual photos online to finance their distance learning. Uh, number one, have you been informed already about these uh, uh, syndicates or itong modus operandi na ito? Uh, number two, paano po ba nangyayari yung transactions dito? Sa, sa Pogo? No, no sir. Um, yung isa pong issue na allegedly may mga estudyante po selling sensual photos of themselves online for them to finance their uh, distance learning tuition probably. Uh, so, so it's, it's a separate it's, ano, yes, incident. Yes, sir. So, uh, sir, um, regarding uh, sa kanyon, sa, sa cyber crime, cyber crime sir. so we'll cyber have it discussed by the cyber crime on that uh, regarding dyan, no? Yung uh, posting of lewd photos kasi yun, di ba? So until such time na may magre-reklamo tungkol doon, then it becomes already a crime. Pero kung personal nilang pinopost yun, no? At uh, kung is nasa kanila po yun, okay? As of now, we will uh, try to task our uh, anti-cyber crime to monitor this ano, posting and uh, to track or to monitor. Kasi mahirap din naman kung, kung mga personal accounts nila yon at uh, papakialaman po natin. No? Until such time that they will complain na in-exploit in sila or may violation po, saka po muna magkikialam ang police po doon. Pero sir, so uh, tama po bang intindi ko na hanggat walang nagre-reklamo, you don't see any uh, cause of concern considering that uh, some of these are minors. Even if these uh, photos or uh, mga, mga Facebook pages or whatever social media pages are their own or personal, the fact na marami sa kanila ay minors at probably hindi rin, nila, hindi rin sila guided properly, wala po ba tayong nakikitang kailangan na intervention ng authorities on this matter? Uh, I think kung minors yan, alam mo, hindi naman kasi kami yung nagmomonitor ng mga accounts no, ng, ng social media. Okay? Hindi po namin pinakalaman yan. Kung, kung voluntary yan, I think it's the parents that should have ano, uh, first answer it. Then after that, uh, if mahagilap namin yung mga report na yan, then we'll turn over it with the DSWD because nasa kanilang function yun. Okay? Now, kami, baka naman pagka mamaya, minumonitor namin yan na ganito, baka kami naman ang mapulaan that uh, we're monitoring sa mga ito. Uh, what we'll do, we'll task our cyber crime to, to monitor this one and maybe track and inform the parents or uh, forward the problems to DSWD for their intervention, for professional intervention po, ma'am. Sir, sa ngayon, uh, wala pang nare-report sa inyo para malaman natin how the transactions are being made? Sa, sa ngayon, wala pa po. No? Mm -hmm. So, we will, ano to, we'll, uh, I will direct the ECG to intensify the monitoring jan po sa platform na yan. Thank you. Uh, sir, isa pa, sorry. Uh, yung, uh, this is with regards to uh, an incident in Pampanga kung saan ang isang napagkamalang suspect ay binaril. Ano po bang rules of engagement natin dito? Kasi napagkamalan lang siyang suspects, binaril na kagad siya and it turns out na hindi <laughs> pala. Totoo po yun. Uh, Na-report na rin po yun sila. At uh, yung sa Santa Rita police station sa Pampanga to. There was an operations ng ano to, may report na may robbery incident. So, nirespondihan po ng mga police natin doon. Pagkatapos nung nagrespondi po sila doon, ay ano to, um, na, yung isa doon, yung isang operative po natin, ay uh, akala niya, yun po ang ano to, yun po ang, ang suspect, no? yun yung suspect, yung kwan, at uh, nabaril niya. So however, yung uh, yung biktima doon, no, ng biktima doon si Mr. Federico uh, Pineda Jr., no, ay uh, ay ano to, um, 
Ano to? Na, namatay po. Ngayon yung pulis po natin ay dinisarmahan po ng chief of police, no? Kinuha po yung kuan at nag-file po ng kaso ng homicide sa kanya. No? I have already instructed that the chief of police, ano, the regional director of Pro3 natutukan po ito, no? Pangalawa doon. Pangalawa, uh, ongoing po yung ano, yung uh, another filing sa kanya for illegal discharge ng firearm, lahat po ay criminal. I instructed RD Pro3 to to also conduct the administrative case no for for his uh, immediate dismissal then and the chief of police and the provincial director of uh, Pampanga PPO were directed to coordinate with the family of the victim and assure them of the police support and uh, assistance and uh, assure them that will not condone such act so yun po ang ginawa at minomonitor po namin yan dito sa Camp Kraming kung ano po mangyari sa incident na yun. Pero, uh, sir, what are the rules of engagement sa ganitong mga situations? Kasi na uh, baka on the part of the police who, who uh, shot the, the person na akala niya suspect, eh, syempre, parang hindi naman intentional dahil akala niya masamang tao. So, yun yung yun yung binaril niya. Paano po ba dapat ang, uh, sa mga ganitong kaso? Kasi, alam mo, pagka nagahabol ka, dapat discernment talaga, alamin mo talaga kung, kung sino talaga ang suspect and you just don't shoot anybody. Okay? So, siguro, I will not uh, comment or anything doon sa situation na yun kasi wala pang binigay na feedback ang COP at hindi pa nila nilabas yung, yung sa side ng pulis. Okay? So, ang directive ko, ay pa-investigahan kagad at tanongin yung police what really happened. So, uh, hindi ko na sila pangunahan muna tungkol doon. So, ang specific guidelines namin based on our POP, dapat dapat imminent ang threat before ka uh, barilin yung isang tao. No? So, ito naman ay uh, wala pa namang feedback ang chief of police. Nakausap ko na po siya kagabi pa na interviewin yung tao namin at alamin kung ano nangyari para po malamin namin kung ano ang ano ang, um, ang circumstances that leads to, to his decision to shut the person. So wala pa po silang feedback, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Next is ma'am Anne Soberano from Bombo Radio. Ma'am. Sir, uh, magandang tanghali. Happy New Year. Sir, ah, uh, May natanggap na po ba kayong report doon sa PAL flight attendant na nakitang patay sa isa sa mga hotel sa Makati, sir? At may motibo na ba doon, sir, kung paano po siya na ano? Uh, as of now, wala pa po akong natanggap na report. Maybe after this uh, press conference, I'll, uh, we'll talk with our DNCRPO at uh, we'll give you the inform needed information. As of now, uh, wala pa. Kung okay lang po sa inyo, madam. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, si Joma Season, sir, ay nagsabi na nag-deploy siya ng mga Sparrow units dito sa Metro Manila para liquidate, ano, i-liquidate itong mga personalities, ilang mga personalities. May na-monitor po ba ang PNP na mga liquidation squad na ng uh, uh, NPA? At uh, anong reaksyon niyo, General, dito sa sinabi ni Joma Season? Sinusundan po namin yung mga statements niya, mga pronouncement niya, at tinitingnan namin muna kung anong effect noon. No? Kung yung bang statement niya could be used against him for any criminal case. No? Uh, I have already talked to some of our legal officers kung yung bang uh, pronouncement niya ay mayroong pwedeng ipahil sa kanya no? for threat whatsoever. We are monitoring, but as of now, uh, wala, hindi mo na ako mag-comment kung mayroon ba kaming na-monitor o wala. We are still conferring with our partner sa AP kung meron sila at ang dinirect ko na lang po ang buong kapulisan na mag-monitor, mamatsyag at mag-ingat. No? Kasi hindi natin alam, ba, nandyan na pala yung sa tabi at alam mo naman mga ito ay mga tridor ito. So, ang gagawin lang namin ay uh, mag-iingat talaga. At kung sinabi ng legal namin na yung pronouncement na lumabas doon sa sa social media, sa, sa newspaper, ay kung pwedeng gamitin na mag-file ng kaso against kay Juma Sison. Ang hirap kasi noon, uh, medyo may mga, mga implications pa kasi. Pero once ma-determine ma ang legal namin 
kung anong ikaso sa kanya, I will, uh, will, will tra- file the case in court. Pero sir, wala tayong natanggap na banta, lalo na sa NPA, or mat- nandyan pa rin yung banta nila to create ano, uh, kaguluhan dito sa Metro Manila. Um, actually, luma- lumabas naman yan kasi nga, dineclare na silang terrorist group. No? Uh, at siyempre, pinaminindigan lang niya at pinapaalala lang niya yung threat na talagang ganun talaga ang purpose nila as a terrorist group. So kami ngayon lang naman, minomonitor namin at pinaigting po namin yung security preparations and uh, uh, aspects po namin at sinisigurado ko rin na yung mga pulis ay handa po sa lahat na threat galing po sa kanila. Maraming salamat, sir. Next is Mr. J. Mark Dagala from DWIZ, sir. Sir, good morning and Happy New Year po. Happy sir, New Year. Opo. Um, effective na po today yung lockdown sa Sulu. And as per uh, Governor Abdul Sakurtan, is talagang hindi na raw nil- kubaga, isasara daw yung kanilang lalawigan. for the possible threat of nung bagong variant ng COVID-19 from Malaysia. Ma- matanong ko lang, sir, ilan po yung mga police natin na nakadeploy po doon and ano po yung mga directives nyo sa kanila? Uh, I received the report na uh, last week yung nag-lockdown ang hulo for the COVID-19. Kumbaga, according sa LGU, tumaas po yung kanila, tumaas po yung... Uh, COVID infections nila and they are suspecting na galing sa labas yung, yung infection. So, the local government, based sa report ng ProArm, uh, ay nagla-lockdown doon. Nawala mo ng papasok at walang lalabas. Uh, hindi mo na kami nagdadagdag ng police doon. Kung ano po yung existing ng police doon, ay sila na lang muna. Ang uh, ginagawa ay pinipigilan mo na yung pumasok at lumabas sa Sulu province. Yun po ang pinapatupad ngayon. Hindi muna kami magdagdag ng pulis kasi hindi naman hiningi ng, ano to, ng uh, local at saka nung, nung provincial director namin ng dagdag. At saka as prevention also, no? na mahirap na magdagdag ng pulis doon na galing sa ibang probinsya, tapos mahawa din. So alam mo na. So, so far, ang sabi naman ng RD Pro Arm ay kinaya pa naman po ng PPO doon, yung Police Provincial Office to secure the area. And yun lang muna ang, ang ginagawa namin. Sir, uh, one more. Um, update, hingi lang po sana ako ng update tungkol doon sa poster uh, Facebook account po ninyo na, na nabalita last week na nabibiktima ng ilan sa, pati yung ilan sa mga personal natin eh, nabibiktima po nitong poster account daw po ninyo. Yung, kung ano? natrack na po ba siya, kung meron na kayong lead. Okay. Actually, ongoing pa po yung, ano, yung uh, investigation jointly by the CIDG at saka ECG. Ang uh, ECG has con- contacted yung mga uh, allegedly na biktima doon kasi based sa uh, account. Yung account na yun ay last week pa closed na. No? Uh, Sinat down na po yun at request na po sa uh, FB management dito sa Pilipinas na i-shut down na yung account na yun. Tinitingnan lang namin kung yung mga numbers na doon ay kinokontak na po ng, ng uh, ACG para po malaman kung anong extent ng uh, damages or extent ng pagkabiktima po nila kung nagbigay sila ng pera. Sa ngayon, ongoing pa po yung investigations. Wala pa silang update sa akin. Thank you po. Next is Ms. Camille Samonte from TV5, ma'am. Hello, Camille. afternoon po, sir. Uh, sir, balikan ko lang po yung issue dun sa Pampanga po, no, na nakapamaril po na police. Sir, I just want to ask, uh, ano po ba yung proper training po ng PNP in terms of pag-handle po ng gun? Because prior to the incident in Pampanga, may mga ilang cases na rin po ng mga, like for example, yung Kinwesca, and yung nag-start din po yung lockdown yung kay Winston Ragos na yung bigla pong pamamarel, and even yung sa holo shooting incident po. Uh, in terms of pag-handle po ng gun, ano po ba yung proper training? Do you think kailangan na po ba ng refreshment or intervention para po siguro mapaalala din yung ating mga police officers? Na, uh, actually ang training naman talaga ng uh, police, mag- kung PNC ka magkumpisa sa sa recruitment, one year ka mag ano to, mag uh, temporary, you undergo the series of training 
kasama doon ang firearm proficiency. Now, pag once mag-graduate ka, in-enhance lalo yung, yung training mo or seminar sa police operational procedures. Then, uh, may mga in-house training doon at may mga guidance. Kaya nga, before ma-deploy yung police, lalo na pag nasa patrolya ka, may mga briefing kami na required. No? Ganun po yun. Now, pagdating kasi sa actual, no? uh, uh, we believe yung police namin are already armed with the necessary training at saka ganun yan. No? So, tapos, yung nangyari doon kasi when it comes to that situations, discernment kasi yun eh. I think uh, kung sabihin mo kung meron kami intervention, siguro we'll just remind our chief of police, our chief commanders to to ano yan, to to remind our people to please always observe yung ano to, yung police operational procedures and check kung may kulang pa ba. Kasi required talaga before ma deploy ay dapat merong briefing. Okay? Now, yung nangyari doon sa ano to, sa Santa Rita ay kanyon, ano to, uh, hot pursuit operations, no? So, ang um, siguro binigyan siya ng, ng descriptions, no? At uh, nakita niya, I just could not comment ko ano talaga yung circumstances na nakapag-decide sa kanya na barilin yon. Kasi hindi pa naman po ni binigay sa amin yung yung interview sa kanya. No, kasi ni-request ko na tanungin yung personnel namin, ano ba talaga ang circumstances? Kasi iba-iba naman po yun eh. Iba-iba po yun. Bawat police na nag ka ay iba-iba po yun. Because of, of course, uh, naka-heighten alert ka kasi nga marami na rin na-report na makasamahan namin na pag nag ay pinagbabaril din. Nakita niya naman yung isa dyan sa Kalookan na nag doon, nagsita, binaril, namatay yung kasama nila. So, siyempre, nag alert na rin yan. I think, kompleto naman po yung training ng mga police po natin. Okay, sir. On another ano naman po, no, topic, um, any update po doon sa PNPA cadet po na na-dismiss dahil po doon sa mulling incident? Okay. Uh, yung tatlo po, uh, yung tatlo, yung ay na ready for termination na po sila. Uh, I requested the I directed the director ng ano, uh, PNPA to process the termination immediately within their uh, level. Kasi meron din silang uh, procedures doon how to do it, di ba? Pero yung tatlo ay naka-detain naka na po doon sa police stations kasi pinailan sila ng uh, physical injuries. No? At din drug test na po sila. So sa drug test po ay uh, so far negative naman. Pero yung alcohol breath po ay, uh, ano to, ay uh, positive. So, uh, they will be discharged for grave misconduct. No? At uh, hinihintay na lang namin yung implementation. Kasi uh, sa, uh, sinabi nga namin palagi na hindi lang basta-basta i-terminate yan. Meron kami sinusunda na procedures para po hindi kami ma-technical in the long run. So, sinusunod po namin yung procedure para pag ma-dismiss siya, tuluyan po. So, itong tatlong uh, first class cadet na nagbugbog ng classmate nila, I surely, uh, all evidences leads to their dismissal. Okay? And, uh, criminal case has been filed at nandun pa po, nandun po sila sa nakadetain ngayon sa police stations na may jurisdiction doon sa PNPA. Sir, nasabi po ba yung rason bakit po na biglang nagbugbog po ng kaklase nila? Ma'am? Ano po yung naging rason? Bakit daw po napunta sa bugbogan? Bakit binugbog? Uh, based sa report ng uh, director at commandant doon, yung binugbog kasi, yun yung core commander nila. No? So it's New Year, so nag-ikot siya, na ganun, nakita niya yung kaklase niya. So nakita niya yung kaklase niya, ay sinita niya bakit nag-iinuman. So accordingly, nung sinita siya, ay uh, siyempre, I don't know, bigla lang daw siyang pinagsusuntok. So one versus three, tapos mas malaki pa yung uh, sumuntok una sa kanya, kaya siya talaga nakita nyo, gulping-gulpi talaga siya. And we're just happy na wala namang uh, fatal injury at wala namang bali yung biktima. But just the same, again, the PNP is not tolerating any mis uh, wrongdoing or misdeeds by our personnel. Kaya nga, dyan pa lang ay pinaimbestigahan na kagad namin. And uh, all evidences are gathered that will lead to, to their termination in the police service.
Sir, um, balikan ko lang sir yung sa ano no, online po, yung mga students po na nagbebenta, al nagbebenta allegedly po ng mga sensual photos and videos on social media. Sir, you mentioned po kanina na kailangan may magsampa muna ng reklamo bago po nyo maimbestigahan. Um, sir, natanong na rin po kanina pag, uh, paano kapag kayong minor, no? Pero sir, tanong ko naman, paano po yung mga nagsusubscribe or yung mga bumibili po nitong mga video, sensual photos po nitong mga minor po na nagpo-post nga online, allegedly to fund their tuition po? Okay. Uh, sinabi ko yun kasi nga, hindi naman kami basta mag-monitor. Diba? We'll be in, uh, pasukin na naman yung mga private lives nyo dyan. No? So, wala kaming na-monitor pa dyan. Kung meron man, kung may magreklamo, then we will react it immediately. So sa ngayon, ngayon lang namin narinig yan eh, na meron palang nagpo-post ng load shows na ganito, then we, I will direct the cybercrime to monitor such posting. Now, kung minor yan, we will inform the parents yan. Hindi naman namin pwedeng uh, kasuhan yung minor na yan eh. Alam nyo naman po yon. So we will try to identify kung sino yan, then inform the parents kung ma-identify natin. No? Kung yung subscriber ay iba po yung ano, iba po yung kaso noon, no? Iba po yung kaso noon. So we will monitor and update you later kung meron po kami ma-monitor niyan. Uh, now, if you know na meron, please pass the account para po mapabilis ang monitoring po namin. Actually, sir, rampant po siya sa Twitter eh, kasi may tinatawag po na parang alter account. May mga students po talaga na nag post and then may mga parang graphics pa sila na parang nakabundle mga ganun po so it would help siguro um, sir last na lang on my end no update naman sir um, dun sa pumatay po kay Holo Town Chief Anayo I believe hindi na di po siya kasama doon sa Holo shooting incident to, pero kasama po siya doon sa may uh, ad administrative case po may update po ba tayo dun sa killer niya actually yes the last time sinabi namin meron ng person of interest, okay? Uh, we're tracking yung baril, kasi yung baril niya is a uh, medyo specialized gun yun, hindi yun ang uh, usually ginamit na gun, ay uh, hindi pa po kami nakakuha ng mga witnesses and other evidence. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, ang nakuha lang natin are, ay raw intel report, na which we could not use to file a case. No? So, we're trying to connect other evidences na pwedeng mag-pin down doon sa mga person of interest po namin. So, as of now, yun, yan lang po ang latest update na binigay sa akin. Okay, sir. Thank you po. Thank, thank you, you ma'am. Ma Next is Mr. Alfred Dalisan from People's Journal, sir. Good morning, sir. Go ahead. Uh, sir, three questions lang. Uh, first, sir, uh, pwedeng ikaw saka yung task force COVID. Kasi okay. sir, yung observation ka po na yung sa kaya po sir, in preparation for the uh, translation, more than 5,000 or 7,000 na yung pumila po doon outside the church, uh, yung possibility na yung transmission ng COVID is always there. Anong ginagawa natin para ma-stop yun? Yes. Uh, sir, do you have some comment? Uh, ang task force ko, Mandem Cover Chief po natin ay si General Cesar Binag. Uh, siya mo na mag-comment, uh, mag then I'll uh, support it na lang. Fred, kung okay sa inyo. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Unang-una sa lahat, yung Manila City, nag-issue nga ng uh, sulat no? doon sa parish priest na yung pagkakandak o pagkaganap ng translasyon ngayong 2021 ay hindi mangyayari. So, nagkaroon ngayon ng variation. So, ang celebration, mayroong apat na simbahan na makakaroon ng misa sabay-sabay. So, yun yung isang para mas maraming lugar ang pwedeng puntahan ng mga tao. So, yun yung isang uh, uh, kumbaga sabihin, adjustment na, na ginawa nila. Pangalawa, doon naman sa ano, may mga kahapon doon sa observation na pinadala mga Alfred, at tinawag natin agad yun sa MPD Director para ma-input nila yun. Ang mga kinoconsider nila yung naging approach doon sa sinulog, yung paglagay ng mga barrier, uh, etc. So malalaman natin, nag, uh, nag-meeting sila, kung ano yung final adjustment na gagawin nila as a result noon sa uh, nangyari nga uh, sa yung pinadala mo o yung uh, nabanggit mo. So, 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 so overall, uh, 
Meron silang uh, apat na lugar na kung saan magmimisa at ang misa magsisimula ng alas 4 ng madaling araw tapos umaabot hang uh, bali, labing anim na misa. No? E, yan, ito, Quiapo Church, San Sebastian Church, Santa Cruz Church, saka yung Nazarene Catholic Church. No? Uh, yun ang uh, kanilang uh, adjustment to be held simultaneously on uh, January 9, uh, 2021. At uh, yun naman sa PNP natin, siyempre uh, this is in support of the uh, overall plan na, in, pinap, na ini-implement ng LGU. Uh, kasama sila doon no? sa, sa lahat ng uh, uh, pagpaplano at uh, sa uh, implementasyon nito na pinangungunahan nga ng uh, uh, city government at siyempre ang uh, local uh, uh, parish priest no? ng uh, Quiapo. Sir? Uh, tama po yun, Fred. No? Kasi... We are coordinating with the Kiapo Church at saka regarding doon. Kung may naobserbahan po kami, ay nire-relate po namin sa kanila. But uh, uh, sometimes, no, uh, may mga times kasi na talagang dumudu, uh, nagdudumugan yung mga tao, kaya pinipilit pa rin natin makontain at pwedeng ikuan yung social distancing. So, so far naman, uh, nag-cooperate naman po yung management na ano, nung uh, Kiapo Church kaya napansin nyo pag may napansin kagad ng mga kumpul-kumpul ay na-advisean na ano to na maghiwa-hiwalay and observe social distancing po and nag-promise na rin po naman yung, yung mga kaparihan natin na kung talagang lalala yung situation ay isasara nila yung Kiapo Church just to implement yung uh, mandatory health protocol yun po yung commitment nila sa amin at saka sa LGU na nagbahala din kasi kami together with the LGU yung Manila na ang commitment nila sa district director ng MPD na pag lumala talaga no, ay isasara po nila yung simbahan. Thank you po. Second question sir. Sir yung briefing po ni Colonel Eustachio uh, correct me if I'm wrong yung previous briefing mo sabi mo yung mga RDs i-empower mo sila para yung dismissal ng mga policemen na nag-test positive for drugs. Dahil nagtatagal, marami sa RIA, sir, nagtatagal na mga kaso. Ano na pong latest nun, sir? Totoo po yun. We have discussed this with RIA already. Na, which comes to drugs, no? ipapaamin ko na lang ulit yung directive na dapat i-handle na ng mga RDs. Okay? Ako, tingnan nyo ang situation ko when I was RD in CRPO. Until now, yung nag-positive na nakuha ko hanggang March, hanggang ngayon sumusweldo pa. Okay? So, sabi ko, could we have that policy also na pag sa drugs, mga ang mandatory nating two months, ay dapat may dismiss na. So, ganun po yun. Tapos, uh, I'll be also be asking na nakita nyo kanina, bakit may nag-resign? Sabi ko, hindi dapat mag-resign yan, dapat pailan natin ang kaso, bahala siya mag-resign pero the kaso is remain kasi nga pag ka ng ano na nagpositive ka dapat dishonorable discharge mo kasi pag nag-resign ka at uh, baka mag-apply ka na naman sa ibang sangay ng gobyerno yun po yung kinukuha namin hinahabol namin kasi pag nag-resign ka at na-approve yung resignation mo mawalan kami ng jurisdiction na naman so yung case mo na naman ay mabinbin so sabi ko sana sa susunod ay uh, once mapa niya na mag-positive at tumabas yung result, ay ipahal kagad yung kaso. Para kung mag-resign ka man, i-dismiss ka kagad. No? Para dishonorable discharge ka at hindi ka na pwede mag-apply sa gobyerno. Yun po yung isa sa mga maganda natin gagawin. At hindi po tumatagal. Sa totoo lang, uh, uh, dalawang beses ako nag-RD, yun po experience ko. Bago, ang tagal talaga, isang taon bago ma-dismiss yung mga positibo sa droga. Yung iba, nag-awol na lang. No? Ganon po. So, sa ngayon, I have already discussed this with the other command groups and sa IAS na yung sa region, lalo na ngayon na pinaigting namin yung random drug test. No? Hindi na lang 25% of our strength. Kung hindi, tuloy-tuloy po. Basta may report na isang polis ay suspected na gumagamit, ay i-drug test agad. Okay? So, aayusin lang namin kontito with the ano, co coordination with IAS para po mapabilis po ang dismissal po nila. Kasi nga, pag nag-positive ka na, 
at kinonfirm na uh, nandoon na lahat ng ebidensya doon. Dapat proseso na lang po ang sundan. Thank you, Fred. Sir, last question, sir. Uh, can you confirm reports na yung PNP, sir, uh, has temporarily suspended the issuance of permits sa explosives dahil sa order ni President na nadadivert yung mga explosive materials na to sa kamay ng NPA? Confirm, amigo. Uh, the President has issued, uh, which is being uh, followed up by SLG, starting January 1, lahat na na-issue na na mga permit to transport ng explosives no? by the yung mga involved sa mining are temporarily suspended until na magawa namin yung direktiba ni Presidente na bago mag-issue ng permit para sa mining ay mayroong confirmations or clearance from the local AAP and PNP commanders doon. Kasi napapansin nga at na-report na yung mga, mga explosives na dinadala doon sa mining, may mga report na, na iba doon ay nahaharang at nakukuha ng mga CCPNPA. No? So kaya nga ang, ang directive ng Presidente ay wala munang i-release or movement ng explosives na walang concurrence ng local AEP commander and PNP. So ginagawa na po namin yun ng palisya which will submit to SILG for his concurrence and approval. Once matuloy po yun, saka po namin i-resume yung issuance ng, ng permit to transport explosives. Sir, uh, clarify lang, uh, clarification lang, sir. Sa mining lang po yun, sir, kasi merong mga uh, complaints na maapektuhan nito rin yung, let's say, yung cement industry. K kailangan din nila na explosive, sir. Kailangan natin sa construction ng semento, sir. Oh, yes, alam din namin yan kasi meron na nga nag -reklamo. But we have to follow the instruction of the President. And uh, until then, na ma-approve yung procedures namin na ginagawa po ng CSG namin at saka nung Directorate for Operations, no, yung may supervision yan, ay hindi po namin uh, pwedeng uh, baliwalain yung directive ng Presidente natin. Alright. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, and I guess... This may be final. Margo Gonzalez, ma'am, from MSNI. Hi, sir. Magandang umaga. Um, hanggang saan po yung maaring pagbabantay o monitoring na pwedeng gawin ng PNP doon sa recruitment daw po ng nitong CPPNPA doon sa mga kabataan or sosyante? Uh, again, ma'am? Hanggang saan? Hanggang saan po yung maaring pagbabantay na pwedeng gawin or monitoring na pwedeng gawin ng PNP doon sa mga recruitment na ginagawa daw po ng CPP and PA sa mga kapataan o sa mga eskwelahan po? Uh, uh, so actually, um, we are monitoring po dyan. We have our own coordinations with uh, our counterparts sa AP plus dyan po sa mga eskwelahan. No? Ngayon, ang pinakamalakas po namin ugnayan kung napansin nyo, doon sa my hands of our kid, yung mga mothers na yung mga anak nila na recruit, doon po kami malakas na ugnayan kasi yung sila ay meron talagang uh, basihan at may reklamo na yung mga anak po nila ay na-recruit. No? So, nakipag-ugnayan po kami doon sa mga parents and we encourage them to at least file a case kung meron kaming pwedeng i-file. Kasi tandaan nyo, tama naman yon To being a member ng isang organization is not a crime yet. No? For example, uh, uh, member ka ng anak pawis. Di ba? Kung member ka doon, hindi naman offense yun eh. As of now, di ba? So wala naman. So naging uh, kuwang ka lang kay kung pumunta ka na doon sa, sa bundok, nag-armas ka na at na kasama ka ng sa engagement. Okay? So kaya nga kami nagmamonitor dyan. Pero doon kami sa mga aspeto na yung mga parents na kasi... Na, na nakikita natin sa social media, nakita natin sa Senate hearing na talagang uh, naghinanakit at uh, nagpahingi ng tulong kung paano nila ma-encourage yung mga anak nila. So, yung mga parents na gustong makipag-ungnayan sa amin ay ini-engage po namin at pinag-aralan yung case nila. Kasi bawat parents may iba-iba yung case. Eh. So, doon po kami. Ngayon, with, uh, pinag-aralan kung paano po mag-file ng kaso against sa recruiter ng mga anak nila, nakilala nila. 
at kung nasaan yung anak nila. Kasi sa ngayon, mayroong mga apat lima doon na yung anak nila ay hindi na po nila nakikita. Sir, kamo sa yung coordination niyo naman sa DepEd and Shed po. Following po yung reports ng recruitment nga po sa mga susyante. Actually, ang ang DepEd maintain their independence. 'Di ba? At kami hindi naman kami namimilit eh. No? Lalo na ngayon kasi nga more on kansila online tayo. Okay? So, kung hindi naman uh, ayaw naman ng DepEd na magkanda kami ng dialogues doon, ay hindi na po namin pinipilit. Okay? We always course to it uh, in legal matters and we respect the authority of DepEd in their schools po ma'am. Okay. Maybe we could still get uh, one or two more questions from Ms. Mari Sumali, ma'am. Sir, uh, I would just like to ask if you have started monitoring election-related uh, violence. Uh, I know it's still in 2022, no? Pero uh, kasi merong ambush uh, sa Cebu ng isang former mayoralty candidate and then in Antipolo of a former barangay candidate naman. Have you started monitoring these election-related violence one year prior to the election? Um, actually, maaga pa masyado, but we are treating independently yung cases na yun, ma'am. So yung sa kay Pilisiano doon sa Cebu, ay kausap ko po yung Chief of Police doon at yung RD ay nagpa-imbisigan na po sila on what really happens kung doon at ano ang background at posibleng suspect doon. We could not say it's, it's uh, related sa politika kasi marami rin namang uh, ibang anggulo na, na ano to, tinitingnan. Kagaya nun, yung, yung victim is a uh, businessman. No? So baka may mga business rivalry, etc. So hinihintay ko lang yung final report ng, ng uh, chief of police natin doon, ng RD natin doon, kung ano ba talaga ang motive behind that uh, killing. And I told them to at least solve the case. No? Kasi nga noted uh, businessman po ito sa, sa Cebu. As to the, yung sinabi mong barangay tanod, uh, hindi ko po hindi ko pa po namin masabi until lalabas yung uh, investigation po, ma'am. And sir, one last. Uh, just a clarification on the Nazareno question a while ago when you mentioned that it wa there was a commitment from the, the leadership of Quiapo Church na kung halimbawa uh, mag talagang lumala, uh, isasara nila yung simbahan. Even, uh, for example, nagsisimula, kasi Pag nagsimula po ng 4 a.m. yung misa, sunod-sunod na po yun eh. Parang yes, hourly na po yes, yung novena masses ng, yes. ng 16 masses yes. po eh. How, will, ha, how do you uh, describe yung lumala ang sitwasyon? And how are they going to, or how are you going to do yung pag, pag, uh, papaalis sa mga tao sa loob ng simbahan ba? Paalisin sila para maisarap yung uh, simbahan? How will it happen? Actually, ang report ng uh, district director natin doon, we're looking on the worst case scenario na, na yung tao ay sisiksik talaga sa loob. Kasi makita mo naman kung pumunta ka ng Quiapo, meron ng mga nilagay na mga designated area. May mga paint na kung saan katatayo. Di ba? At meron ng ano to, uh, saan ang labasan, saan pasukan, may mga pulis na doon, at yung seating capacity sa loob, yun lang po ang pinapasok. So far ngayon naman ay uh, sinusunod naman. No? Ang tinignan namin worst case scenario, paano pag hindi na sumunod yung iba na in spite na ito lang ang pwedeng papasukin ay mamimilit sa loob. Uh, lahat naman ng mga pintuan ay merong, meron ng mga ninyos, meron ng mga laymans na nagbabantay. No? May mga pulis na rin sa peripheral kasi yun yung pong usapan namin. So kung worst comes to worst ng scenario na usapan na talagang malala, Nag-commit naman yung mga rectors natin doon, mga payo natin doon, na pag lumala sir, ayot na sumunod, ay willing sila isara yung, yung, yung pintuan ng, ano, ng uh, Quiapo, tapos palabasin nila yung iba, then i-halt mo na yung mass. Yun po yung commitment nila, based po sa report ng district director, when we toast the problem on the worst case scenario, na talagang hindi na, yung, hindi na mapigilan na maraming magpipilit. Pero so far ngayon, ha, yung last uh, sa... Uh, January 1, it was a new year and a Friday. So, doon po yung una tiningnan namin. So far, nag-observe naman. No? So, meron lang mga minor na infractions ay nakorek naman po namin. At nakorek naman po ng mga, mga uh, management po ng Kiapo. And we're very, very happy with our relationship with them. 
Okay, I guess that ends this uh, Q&A. Maybe now have the final words from the GPNP, sir, please. Uh, uh, this is our first uh, press conference. I'd like to greet again everybody. Uh, belated Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to all. At sana tuloy-tuloy na yung pag-unlad natin. With that, in behalf of your uh, chief uh, command group and staff na nandito po, na ready po sumagot sa mga tanong nyo, magandang araw magand sa inyong lahat at mabuhay po tayo. Thank you.